Miss Go Electric here. Today is Sunday, October 19th, 2025, and this is The Current, your weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. Let's get started with some public charging stories. Rivian announced improvements to the charging experience for their owners with an over-the-air software update this week as they streamline integration with leading charging networks Electrify America and IANA. The enhancement brings real-time charger availability and power speeds directly into the vehicle's navigation system and mobile app. Drivers can now filter for IANA stations or prioritize them in trip planning. They also have incorporated plug and charge capability for both networks, allowing users to simply plug in to initiate a session at compatible stations without taking action to authorize with an app or credit card. Electrify America isn't stopping there. They also announced an update in partnership with Google. The company has rolled out integration with Google Maps, delivering live charger status data nationwide. The update embeds real-time details on station availability, connector types, charging speeds, and operational readiness directly into the popular navigation app. The feature is now live for iOS and Android users. Chargeway, a third-party EV charging app, announced the launch of its real-time pricing feature. The update delivers live per kilowatt hour rates for more than half of North America's public charging stations, covering over 85,000 plugs across 50 networks in the US and Canada. The feature allows drivers to compare costs at a glance and estimate total session expenses based on their vehicle's battery state of charge, charge limit, and time of day. Notably, prices fluctuate due to utility provider peak charges and site congestion surcharges. The pricing tool is included with the $5.99 monthly Chargeway Plus subscription, and they offer a 30-day free trial. If you haven't heard of Chargeway before, the app's patented color and number system further simplifies decisions by highlighting plug types, power levels, and estimated charge times. It's compatible with EVs which support Apple CarPlay for access to this data on those vehicles' center touchscreens. The friction, misinformation, and fear of the unknown around EV charging during long-distance road trips can deter buyers from considering an electric vehicle. Updates from all of these brands reduce that friction and improve transparency related to the public fast charging effort and costs. EV adoption will expand at an accelerated rate as companies continue to remove barriers like this. General Motors disclosed a $1.6 billion charge in its third quarter earnings, marking a sharp retreat from its aggressive push into electric vehicles as federal incentives vanish and demand cools. The automaker's 2021 pledge to phase out gas and diesel models globally by 2035 was attributed to the bulk of the write-down, including $1.2 billion for unused machinery and equipment installed for EV production at factories in Detroit, Spring Hill, Tennessee, and Ramos, Mexico. This is in line with recent and temporary production halts, which we have reported. An additional $400 million stems from supplier contract cancellations and settlements tied to the now idled investments. One of these idled investments has been revealed this week. Back in late 2021, GM announced a partnership with South Korean battery materials producer POSCO Future M, who intended to produce cathode active materials through their joint venture. This week, the company has confirmed that they have indefinitely suspended the second phase of their plant in Quebec. The decision announced Thursday halts plans to ramp up production capacity and add a precursor materials facility to the $430 million site, which broke ground in 2022 and began initial operations earlier this year. The joint venture named Ultium CAM, 85% owned by POSCO and capitalized at $327 million, was designed to produce 30,000 tons of cathode active material annually, enough for about 220,000 EVs under an eight-year supply deal with GM's Ultium Cells LLC. Phase one, focused on high nickel cathodes, remains operational, but the expansion's delay stems from changing U.S. policy, including the presidential administration's recent elimination of the $7,500 federal tax credits and relaxed EPA emissions penalties. GM's strategic shift towards different battery chemistry, 
might also be related. Following the news, Brazilian miner Vale SA scrapped their planned nickel sulfate plant in the region, as GM was its sole prospective client. In the midst of the expansion halt, GM's partner, POSCO, has received some positive news. This week, the company has inked its largest ever supply contract worth $470 million for natural graphite anode materials with a US-based major global automaker. The confidential four-year agreement will start in 2027 at their Korean plant and potentially extend to a decade for up to $1.2 billion. The deal is said to be in response to the ongoing trade conflict between the U.S. and China, resulting in the reworking of battery material sourcing. As the world's 11th largest anode producer with just 1.3% of global market share, POSCO Future M is also planning to double their synthetic graphite capacity to over 18,000 tons by year end, which is part of a $9 billion investment push through 2027. This strategic charge is not a new practice for GM. Last December, the company announced a massive $5 billion non-cash charge in its fourth quarter filings, reflecting a devaluation and restructuring of its long-standing joint ventures in China, once the automaker's most profitable market outside the U.S. and the current leading EV market globally. Back then, the charges included a $2.6 billion to $2.9 billion write-down on GM's equity stake in SIAC General Motors Corp., its 50-50 partnership with Sayak Motor, plus $2.7 billion for operational overhauls like plant closures. This follows heavy losses of $347 million through the first nine months of 2024 versus a $353 million profit in 2023 amid a 42.5% sales plunge in the first 11 months, dropping GM from market leader to 16th place. The charge is a special item driven by our expectations that EV volumes will be lower than planned because of market conditions and the changed regulatory and policy environment, said a GM spokesperson to Reuters. The timing of the charge is sensible, considering record EV growth in Q3 and a likely strong Q4, which is reflective for most car companies with historic positive end-of-year sales figures. With news of slowing EV production and the pullback of battery materials production plans, do you think GM is making the right decisions? Will their US-focused decision-making prevent them from becoming a competitive EV manufacturer globally? Aptera Motors, a California-based solar electric vehicle startup, marked a milestone this week by completing its direct listing on the NASDAQ capital market under the ticker symbol SEV. A direct listing is a process where a company goes public by allowing existing shareholders to sell their shares directly on a stock exchange without issuing new shares, avoiding underwriters and high banking fees. It provides liquidity for current investors but doesn't raise new capital for the company. In contrast, an initial public offering or IPO involves issuing new shares to the public through underwriters, raising fresh capital for the company but often at higher costs and with more regulatory complexity. Direct listings are typically leaner and faster, while IPOs involve more intermediaries and structured pricing. Trading commenced on Thursday, October 16th, allowing existing shareholders to sell up to 31.7 million shares of Class B common stock without the company raising new capital. As a pre-revenue public benefit corporation, Aptera boasts over $120 million raised from more than 17,000 investors, fueling development of its flagship three-wheeled two-passenger Aptera vehicle. The company, which reported $13 million in cash reserves as of June of 2025, recently secured a $75 million equity line of credit to support manufacturing at scale. The company has frequently delayed the launch of its product, with most recent delays identifying low-volume deliveries next year. The company started in 2006, and their Aptera Type 1 design was initially revealed in 2007, which drew attention for its striking resemblance to the unrelated, non-commercial, award-winning student Aztec solar car project developed at MIT in 1993. The first configuration of Aptera went out of business in 2011, 
the liquidated remains were purchased by a Chinese company, which did not proceed with U.S. development and finally dissolved the company by 2013. The original founders rebooted the brand with its current incarnation of Aptera in 2019. In its various forms, Aptera has collected an estimated $223 million from investors over the last 19 years and has not yet delivered a product. Do you think Aptera will reach 2026 sustained production with the $40,000 launch edition of its two-passenger auto cycle? These have been our top EV news stories for this week. If you found value in our coverage, we ask that you subscribe and share this video online. Thank you for watching and until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.